Guys, in this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite and best performing patterns of all time. It's very, very simple. Um, and I've done so many back tests over the years, so much forward testing uh, that a few key patterns have always shown themselves to be the best. So this is hopefully going to be a really, really good one for you. I'm going to try and keep it really simple. Uh, it's two parts. And uh, yeah, so the first part is going to be the impulsive break. So impulsive slash high, high volume. Okay, so we need an impulsive break. And then it's about knowing how to draw the zone. We're not going to be talking about entry refinement as much in this video. We're mainly just going to be talking about the actual premise of the system and the pattern. And then we can always focus on uh, on entries in another video. So impulsive break, what does that mean? Well, for the purposes of simplicity and to keep things nice and simple, um, one of the big mistakes and confusions that people often get in when they're looking at, okay, what's a good break is, okay, well, I need to know what my level is that I'm looking to get broken. And so the easiest way to do that is to keep it systematic. And in this case, if we just use daily highs and lows, meaning the highs and lows of daily candles, then that's going to be one of the easiest ways to do it. So for example, the first one that jumps out to me in terms of how recent it is, is this one here. Because we break past, this candle has closed beyond the low, and it's very important that it closes, doesn't just wick, beyond the low of the previous candle. Now, what this means is that from this point, there has been a close, uh, a, a close beyond. This means that this level becomes theoretically activated. Now, the way that, in theory, it should be drawn is a zone around this whole area. Why? Because price may not respond exactly here. Maybe it will go and mess around within here because it was something that was happening around here in this area here that caused this break. And the premise is, is that whatever was there causing prices to move should still be there. At least some version of it should still be there at least a little bit, right? And so that's the whole kind of premise behind it. Now, there are lots of different ways to identify each of these moving parts. You know, identifying an impulsive break. I prefer eyeballing it. Some people like to define it. Um, I don't know many ways that would be really efficient at defining it. Maybe looking for a fair value gap, imbalance, whatever. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all the same shit. Like it's just an impulsive break. Use your eyes. It's not very difficult. Um, and so. In terms of zones, how do we draw zones? Well, some people prefer to draw levels. So for example, they'll have a level here and maybe they'll have a level here. Now, why would somebody choose this option over a zone? You know, if it's just the same thing? Well, it comes down to your entry refinement because if you're looking at this as your potential entry area, again, this video isn't taught to talk about entries, you know, your stop could maybe be around about here and you know, have the same targets, your risk reward would be better than if you just had the stop at the overall high over here. And so, like I said, this isn't gonna be about entry refinement this video, but the reason that someone may pick one over the other is purely down to their style, what they like to do, how they like to be uh, to operate with entries and stuff like this. Uh, for me, I like to be aware of the whole zone, so I will mark out the whole zone. But everyone's got their own preferences and their own, uh, their own things that they that they like and dislike. So something to keep in mind. So the next thing is, okay, what does this look like on different time frames though? So if we look at the same area. It's the same thing. We had our big impulsive break right here. And if we were to zoom in, we can see what caused it. So we look at, okay, well, where did this come from? Remember, guys, right, that prices are either compacted and compressed before they have their impulsive move. And so if we have broken to the downside, then the idea is that when we return here, whatever caused this in the first place, hopefully we'll have just a little bit of momentum even to just get a little move for us. And that's going to be enough in a lot of cases to make a significant decision. And so if we look here, there's a few different ways of doing this because we can see price in more detail. Now we can look at things a little differently. So for example, right here, if we look at this, area we could even refine it to this this would be a, a variation of when i drew a line here on the higher time frame because we are just isolating a different area and we're treating them as individual zones i could then have a zone up here around this little cluster of price up here why because of how it's looking you see how we have this cluster where we go down we go up we, then we break we go down we go up and then we break these are all different ways of doing the exact same thing. The benefits of this is it means that potentially the risk reward could be better. If you're getting in here, it means you can put your stop kind of a little bit above this specific zone and then look to wherever that target may be. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go through uh, some more examples. I'm going to go back to the daily just so I can see some significant breaks in price. And often, guys, you will find that in terms of targets, seeming as we're on that topic, 
um, is you can find the exact same thing in reverse. So right now, again, I'm just going to draw this with a line here, the example we had before. Um, where could this go to? Where's that like high probability place? Well, if we look, we actually had this candle, yesterday's daily candle at the time of recording this, it closed above the previous days. So we have this. And so in theory, this would become a really high probability target because we are going from first touch level, meaning this is the first touch of this level to hopefully this being the first touch of this level. I don't know if it is. In fact, I can double check, put a vertical line here, go to the one hour. Okay, so this wouldn't be our first touch of this level, but that's actually a good sign when you're looking at targets because my philosophy is always, um, I'm looking for the first touch for me to get on in on the entry because I'm assuming that with each touch, we're typically going to go further into a zone. So for example, we have a, a level above price. First touch, I'm expecting this. Second touch, I'm expecting it to break past the high of the previous. Next touch, I'm expecting it to go past the high of the previous. Now, in other words, this means that each touch of a level should go deeper eventually. So if I'm using this for a target, this is an advantage because it means that I can actually look to get involved deeper than the previous touch. You know, for example, if I'm buying um, down here and I know that we've already had one touch, then I could be looking to exceed that level right there, which is going to be an advantage. So if we apply that to this situation right here, the previous touch was here. So now I've already got a little bit of an improvement on the potential target that I've got here. And we can potentially look to, to take that area there. Um, so let's look for some more examples. They're literally everywhere in price, guys. Here we have big impulsive candle, very obvious one, which obviously broke past the low of this. I'll just stretch that out. And then where did we come into? Well, look at how we behaved here. We had a strong impulsive break of this level and we go straight in from here, straight down to here. I started my career in scalping. That was my bread and butter for a very long time. But as time went on, I hated staring at charts. And so I moved up the time frame. And this is what happens for a lot of people. Not everyone, but a lot of people end up going this way. So a lot of the, the things that I look at are very close to price. And the reason for that is because I like having the benefit of the higher time frames because it gives me more, free to refer, uh, more freedom, basically. Um, but I like to apply some principles that I took from scalping. And this is one of those. It's looking for those quick um, little in out uh, movements. Now, the great thing about doing this on something like a daily chart is, you know, this quote unquote in out movement is almost 40 pips for that entire move. Um, and then if we were to break this down, see what it looks like, I'm just going to draw a zone around this whole area just to make things uh, straightforward here. Okay, so you can see it's the same thing just shown in more detail. We have the impulsive move. What caused this impulsive move? It was this buildup of volume here. We then leave for a while, we come back, and then we start ping-ponging between these levels. This, we could have extended down here, and we see we ping-pong, 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 ping-pong. And depending on how we like to do things, some people like to refine it. So how would we refine each one of these zones on the, the one hour? It's going to be for those people who are desperate for better entries, which is a large, large group of people. Um, it depends how aggressive you want to be. The really aggressive version is going to be something like this. Okay, looking to get involved in something like that. Uh, the slightly less aggressive version is going to be extending it maybe to not the full high, but up here. And then that for the original zone there. At the end of the day, all refinement is, is we're looking for basically zones within zones. Okay, so if you can identify a zone, you can identify a zone within a zone. Just normally means you need to be looking at a different time frame. Same thing is true over here in reverse, okay, on the upside. This area right here, drawn around this kind of little consolidation before the aggressive move. This is an equivalent to just using a line in a sense. You know, we're very similar to if we just use the line, we're just making the zone a little bit smaller to potentially allow a better risk reward setup. Now, you must remember that if you go for a bigger risk reward, your win rate is going to decrease. They are completely linked to one another. And so like 95% of win rate isn't determined by skill. It's determined by your risk reward. There's a big misconception. I've made many, many videos ranting my absolute face off about this, but uh, I won't. Uh, I won't do that now. So you can go and watch that if you're if you're interested. Um, anyway, so let's look at one more example, and then we will uh, we'll crack on. So over here, um, let's in fact, let's just do an example of one that didn't work, just to show you, because we want to be realistic here. So daily candle high, we broke above it with an impulsive candle, right? So so far so good. But then if we look at this on the four hour and see how it played out, 
we can already see that it just didn't respect it whatsoever. This is going to happen and that's fine. Um, instead, what happens is we then break past this daily candle low. And so this essentially becomes a zone that is now valid. Um, so just correct that to be the right area. And then eventually these levels are usually hit. So we missed it here. So I'd still consider this a first touch, but around here right now is going to be basically what I would consider to be an ideal type scenario. Now, in terms of a target in this scenario, um, it would probably be the low of around here. Why? Because we have a zone here. And because we have a zone here, we have the first touch here. And as I said, I'm always expecting that second touch to at least go a little deeper. And so for me, this makes the most sense. Why would, it, why would I not have picked this, you know, as I've been drawing zones around here of breaks? Because this isn't impulsive. Why? Because we've got a huge upper wick here. That's not going to be an impulsive high volume candle in my favor. And therefore, that zone isn't as relevant to me. So moving it down here, this would be an example of a pretty good risk reward scenario. Um, you know, if someone's going with a just at face value, just something like this, that's going to be a very basic, almost a one to one for somebody who wants to refine it just that little bit more. They would be going within here and looking for where the majority of the volume was clustered. Now, I can tell you, looking at this, it was right here. Why was it right here? Because, look, out of all of the moot time we were around here, we spent the most time here. Yes, we had this big spike, big spike back down, but the volume was more largely built here. So when we return to that level, that's significant. What does that mean? It means that we are allowed to potentially get some better risk reward scenarios, um, which obviously it's going to work out in our favor. However, it does come with a lower win rate because we're trying to be more specific. The more specific you try to be, the lower your win rate will be. And so it's about understanding who you are as a trader, what you like, what you don't like, all these sorts of things. So hopefully that's made sense, guys. Um, if you'd like to see me doing these things and many other things in real time, I'd recommend joining the free Telegram group. We've also now got a monthly option for the paid community. If you want to see all of our systematic rules, as well as all of the setting changes as and when they happen, as well as us calling out alerts, education, everything for free in the, well, not for free, but in the group, then you're more than welcome to join that. But if you just want a little trial of that, then go ahead and join the free Telegram. Um, if you'd like to see any content ideas in particular, then please do let me know in the comments section below and uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.